Let's talk about organizing resources for research. Hello and welcome, I'm Kelly Williams. I recommend that you set four main goals for organizing your resources. First, you need a location where you can securely store and access your papers. This will make it convenient for you to mark up the papers, such as highlighting and making notes. Next, you should have a way to automate the citations and reference lists for your work. When you're several hundred pages into a publication or a dissertation or a thesis, you really don't want to have to control find your way through the paper to find every instance of a certain citation. I'm sure you also don't want to have to change all of your citations and reference listings if you get caught in the middle of a formatting standard change, such as the move from APA 6th edition to the 7th edition. You should develop a tool to help you begin the evaluation and synthesis of the research. This can include a summary of the methods and findings of these papers, as well as information on other items relevant to your work. Finally, I recommend developing a tool to track specific details about the papers you've selected for your work. This can be useful to defend the scholarly merits of your research and demonstrate the rigor of your literature review. In practice, those goals are accomplished through these four tools. In my mind, this process all begins with effective local storage. I prefer to keep all papers for a certain research effort in one central location. This is my personal example of how I organized all the papers for my dissertation. You'll notice that these files are incremented with an identification number followed by a short title of the paper. Based on your preference, you could also include additional identifiers such as the year of the publication or the first author's name. I chose to organize these papers in chronological order based on when I downloaded the paper. They're not at all organized by subject, or any other type of identifier. I feel that one benefit of this style is that you come to know the papers by the identification number as opposed to a long title or the author. For example, in my dissertation, I knew that my prime papers were 1, 15, and 17. Even by the time I got to 50 papers in this folder, I realized I needed a very quick way to identify the work. One benefit of keeping a local copy of these files is that you know you have the paper accessible and you're not reliant on an internet connection or a cloud service. If I found a useful website, I would even save an HTML copy of that site so that I had a physical copy on my computer. And then from these local files, you can open them and mark them up as you like highlighting, adding notes, color coding, or using any other technique that you find useful. The tool that I found most useful to organizing and automating my citations and references is Mendeley. Mendeley is similar to RefWorks and other reference managers, but I found it to be particularly useful. Mendeley has several tools, but the two that seem to be most popular are the Mendeley Reference Manager and the Mendeley Desktop Program. My personal preference is the Mendeley Desktop Program Although it's older than the Mendeley Reference Manager, it doesn't rely as much on cloud storage and seems to integrate better with the local storage that I have. One of my favorite features of Mendeley is that it allows me to add a watch folder so that every time I download a new publication, Mendeley adds it to my library and attempts to extract the details of the publication automatically. If the paper is written in English, Mendeley seems to do a pretty good job of extracting the details of the paper but you really need to come into the app to make sure that the details are correct. You can find a lot of tutorials on how to use Mendeley online, so we're not gonna get into that here. The tool that I use to begin evaluating and synthesizing my research is the commonly used annotated bibliography. For my dissertation, I set up a slightly unconventional annotated bibliography. I realized early in my research that I was spending a lot of time developing the annotated bibliography for resources that I was pretty sure were not going to play a critical role in my work. So what I decided to do was to enter a minimal amount of information for every resource that I download. As an example, for every file that I download, after I give it the sequential identification number, in this case 71, and ensure the file name makes sense. I create my entry in the annotated bibliography. After I make this entry, I insert the automatic citation through the Mendeley plugin of Microsoft Word. I'll show you what that looks like. For this example, I'll recreate the entry for paper 71. So I just highlight and copy. Now for this example, I'm just gonna make a little room in the file here and paste it. Then through the Mendeley plugin, which is a separate installation. I will insert citation, paste the title, remove the ID number, and there is my paper. So this is the automatic citation 
that Mendeley developed for me. And then what this does is give me the opportunity to go into Mendeley and confirm that everything is correct. So in Mendeley, you can search the paper name and again, remove the ID number. In this case, there's no duplicates of the proper paper. So I'll select it. Make sure that all the detailed information about this paper is correct. If you do have duplicate entries in your Mendeley library, I recommend that you delete the duplicates and just keep the one that you will keep current. This doesn't delete the actual file, it just deletes the library entry. Now any changes that you make in the details of the publications will be reflected in your in-body citation and your reference list. Once the details are confirmed to be correct in Mendeley, I go back to the bibliography. My personal technique is to make each of these entries an APA level 2 heading, and what that does for me is create an automated entry into a table of contents. I don't use this table of contents often, but it is sometimes nice to see all of the citations in a condensed format. Additional functionality that I have built into my bibliography is the reference list. Now this is also created through Mendeley with the word plugins insert bibliography function. So what this does is every time I enter a new paper into the bibliography, it will automatically create a new reference list entry. My next step is to confirm that the reference list entry is in the proper format. The publication for this example is by Renaud, listed here. And scanning through this entry, I can see that it is in the proper format. The Mendeley plugin for Microsoft Word lets you select from some common formatting or to make your own. If there are problems with the entry, I'll go back to Mendeley and make the corrections that are necessary. The final step in my system of organization is to enter the new papers into my research log. For me, the research log allows me to search for specific pieces of information that I've collected for all of the papers in my library. These pieces of information can be things like the date of the publication, the type of methods and methodologies that were used for the research, the theoretical framework that the authors used for the research, and anything else that I think might be of interest. The key to the entries in the research log is to keep the information short and sweet, and the quality that may be common for many of the papers in the library. Here's an early example of my research log before it was completed. You can see that I've used the same name as in my local storage, and in the annotated bibliography. Some of the information I've chosen to summarize here is the date of the publication, if the researcher utilized a theoretical framework to guide their research, if the paper is peer-reviewed and scholarly, and the general research methodology among several other categories. One example of how I use this research log and these bits of information is shown here. In this analysis, I was able to select only the papers published since 2001 and create a histogram showing the prevalence of selected papers by year. This allowed me to present casual information about the trends and publications for my research topic. Diving deeper into those trends, I was able to select only those papers which are specifically applicable to my research area, utilize the theoretical framework, and are peer-reviewed and scholarly. The new histogram helped me support the claim that there was indeed a gap in literature. To summarize the process, I find high-quality papers, download them to local storage, increment the chronological identification number, and create a file name with the paper's title, ensure the details that are in Mendeley for this entry are correct, and then populate the annotated bibliography and the research log with this information. It is common that I'll download several papers before entering them into the annotated bibliography, and it may be even longer until I enter them into the research log. For me, the most important part of all of this is keeping my papers in one location and utilizing the file name convention that I've described. I hope this helped give you some ideas about how you might want to approach organizing resources for your research, but just realize that there is no perfect system and that you may want to make tweaks to your system as you go. Just remember that this system is intended to maximize the time that you can spend in research and not scrambling to find key bits of information from hundreds of papers. Your system of organization will work best if you develop it early, preferably before you get into the research stage, I know I wouldn't want to retroactively go through the 172 papers that I have and enter them into this system. Once you're fairly comfortable with your system of organization, I recommend that you generally stick to it and make only small changes as needed, because any time that you spend switching from one system of organization to another system is just time you're taking away from your research. Good luck and thanks for watching.